Hi everyone! This video is an introduction to cells. So in this video we'll go over cell theory, some information about cell size, and a few features that all cells share. So we'll start with cell theory. Cell theory is one of the really big ideas in biology. It's considered a core principle of biology, and it's made up of two parts, two main ideas. And the first one is that all living things, no matter how big or how small, are made up of one or more cells. So if you find a really tiny living thing, you zoom way in on it, you might find it's made of one cell. You could zoom in on a really huge plant and find out even though it's really big, it's made of lots of small individual cells like this. Same thing with you, you're a pretty big critter, but if we could take a really close look at you, we would see that you are made of tiny individual cells, some of which look like this. And you'll have a chance to look at some of your cells that look like this uh, probably later this week. The second part of cell theory is that all cells come from other cells. And they do this through a process of cell division where one cell copies all of its important material and then divides itself into two cells with that material. So that's cell theory. And as you'll remember from chapter one, we can divide life on Earth into different groups depending on the characteristics of their cells. So let's revisit that for a moment to review. In chapter one, you learned about the two general types of cells that are out there. We have prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Now you'll remember that prokaryotic cells are found in organisms in the domains bacteria and archaea, and that they tend to be really tiny, simple cells. They don't have a whole lot going on inside them. They don't have any membrane-bound organelles, and they don't have a nucleus. Whereas cells that are eukaryotic are in organisms found in the domain eukarya or eukaryota. And again, those are the plants, the animals, the fungi, and the protists. And they tend to have really large, complicated cells. There's a lot more going on in there. So they do have membrane-bound organelles, and they do have a nucleus. Now, if you're looking at cells under the microscope, it's not always really easy to see the stuff inside, see whether they have organelles or anything else inside there but we can usually get a good idea of the size. So one of the easiest ways to tell prokaryotic from eukaryotic cells is by size. In general, eukaryotic cells tend to be about 10 to 100 times larger than prokaryotic cells. So here's a size scale going from some really teeny things like one atom all the way on up to something pretty large like a human. And this is a special scale we've got on the bottom here. This is a logarithmic scale where each mark on the x-axis here is 10 times greater than the one that came before. So for example, here's one millimeter, here's 10 millimeters, and this next mark is 100 millimeters. So each one is 10 times larger. We're gonna be hanging out in this general region of the scale here. And I'm not sure if you've seen that symbol before, that funny little backwards U with the tail on it, that's micro. And so we're gonna be looking at micrometers. And a micrometer is 10 to the negative six meters or one one thousandth of a millimeter. So that's really small. Now, we'll start over here with the bacterial cell. You know that's a prokaryote. So a lot of those prokaryotic cells fall right in this region here about one micrometer. Eukaryotic cells like plants and animals though, a little bit further up the scale, a little bit bigger. So they tend to be in this region here and about 10 to 100 times larger. You'll see some eggs on here. And eggs are really weird cells. They're unusually large, so we're not gonna count them as a typical cell, but this is a general range in which we see eukaryotic cells. Another way to think about it is if you look at a eukaryotic cell under the microscope and it looks about this big, if you were to also look at a prokaryotic cell under the same magnification, it might look about that size relative to the eukaryotic cell. So there is a big size difference that you can see. But whether prokaryotic or eukaryotic, individual cells are almost always very small. Well, why is that? Why are you made of billions of tiny little cells rather than just a dozen big ones? Well, in order to understand that, we have to look at how cells interact with their environment. And cells constantly need to exchange materials with their environments. So if this is one of your cells, it's going to need to take in all sorts of different stuff. It's going to need to take in food and oxygen. It's definitely going to need to take in water. And if it's a cell in a complicated critter like you, it probably has to communicate with other cells. So it needs to take in those signal molecules as well. It also has to get rid of stuff. Maybe it needs to get rid of waste. Maybe it needs to send signals to other cells. So there's constantly stuff going out of and into your cells. Well, how do they do that? If we take a zoom in on 
the very outside edge of the cell here, we'll see that there are some structures here that are almost like doors to allow materials to move into and out of the cell. So the more surface area a cell has, the more of these doors it has. So it's more efficient because more stuff can move into and out of the cell. Building on that idea, if we have a cell that's this size, maybe we can only fit a certain number of doors on that cell. But if we have a cell that's this size, it must be much better because we can fit lots and lots of doors on there, right? Well, it actually gets a little more complicated than that. Let's say, for example, we have this item in the cell and it's a waste molecule and the cell needs to get rid of it. If it's in the small cell, it only needs to go that far. If it's leaving from the large cell, it actually needs to go much further. It has to work its way through all this volume of the cell and it actually becomes inefficient. So we find that with cells, they actually have to maximize the amount of surface area they have relative to the volume inside the cell in order to be most efficient. So they have to maximize that ratio. They want the most surface area relative to volume. And we find that as cells get bigger, the volume actually increases faster than the surface area. So for the small cell, it's gonna have a higher ratio of surface area relative to its volume. It's gonna be pretty efficient. Whereas this large cell, because the volume is increasing faster than the surface area, it's actually going to have a lower ratio of surface area relative to its volume. So that's going to be less efficient. In general, the smaller a cell is, the higher that ratio is, the more surface area it has relative to volume. That's what cells want, lots of surface area relative to volume. So the small cell, that's a better situation. It's going to be more efficient than this big cell. So now that you know some basic information about cells, Let's take a look at some of the specific features that are found in or on cells. In this video, we're just gonna look at a few features that all cells have. And then over the next couple of weeks, you're gonna learn much more about specialized features found only in specific types of cells. So to start, we'll look at two cells. Here's a prokaryotic cell. Here's a eukaryotic cell. And remember, the prokaryotic cell is gonna be much smaller than the eukaryotic cell, but for the purpose of seeing things clearly, I've made them both about the same size in these slides. So the first thing all cells have in common, well, if you think about your cells as being essentially bags of goo with stuff inside them, let's start by talking about that goo. That goo is something called cytosol. That's just cell fluid. It's the fluid inside the cell. It's an aqueous solution of salts and proteins, a little bit gooey. If you've ever had allergies or a bad cold, cytosol is a little bit like that runny, clear snot you get. You know what I mean. And it's a little bit gross, but it's kind of that, that same consistency. So the cytosol is just the fluid, but more often in biology, we talk about cytoplasm, which is the cytosol plus all the stuff suspended in it. So the cytosol plus the organelles or whatever else is in the cell. So in this prokaryote, there's our cytoplasm there. It's just pointing to sort of the, the liquid inside the cell. And over here for our eukaryotic cell, it's gonna be the liquid in the cell plus all this other stuff that's suspended in it, except for the nucleus. So that's the first thing. What else do all cells have in common? Well, if we're going back to that idea of your cells being bags of goo, we've got the goo, what about the bag? Something around the outside of the cell, and that is the plasma membrane, also called the cell membrane. So in our prokaryotic cell, you can see here, it's shown as this sort of orangey layer. It's just a layer of stuff around the cell. In the eukaryotic cell too, there we go, there's our plasma membrane. It's just the bag that holds everything in the cell. So it surrounds the cell and it also has the job of controlling what goes into and out of the cell. If we could zoom way in on the plasma membrane and look at the actual molecules that make it up, we'd see that it's primarily made up of a double layer of phospholipids. So you can see our individual phospholipids here. Shown in pink is that hydrophilic head, and then we've got those hydrophobic tails. And you can see that there's some other molecules in there too. There's proteins, there's carbohydrates, and you're gonna learn a lot more about the specific structure and function of membrane in the next few weeks. But for now, you just need to know that it's on the outside of the cell, and it's mostly phospholipids. What else do all cells have? Well, if you take a look at these diagrams, another word that might pop out to you as occurring more than once is 
here, ribosomes. And the ribosomes are these tiny little dots inside the cell. So there's one, there's another one. If we go over to the eukaryote, they're actually a little harder to see in this diagram, but you can see there's some kind of stuck to this organelle here. And there's a few of them down in the cytoplasm here, just sort of floating around. So ribosomes are found in all cells and they are really tiny little organelles and their job is to build proteins. So they are the organelles that put together amino acids, make those peptide bonds, and actually build all the proteins that your cells use. And your cells need tons of proteins, so you can see there are a lot of ribosomes in there. Now some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, I thought we said prokaryotes didn't have any organelles. And you're mostly right, but what we said was prokaryotes don't have any membrane-bound organelles. And ribosomes are kind of special because they actually don't have membrane around them. They're, they, they're not membrane-bound organelles. We'll learn more about ribosomes very soon, but for now, here's a preview. The ribosome is the, the part shown in blue here, so no membrane around it. It's kind of a special little thing. We'll talk more about those later. And there's one more thing that all cells have. It's something really important that you've all heard of, and that is DNA. So that really important molecule that contains all the instructions for what's in the cell and what the cell does. And it's found in different forms in different kinds of cells. So in prokaryotes, the DNA is organized into one circular chromosome that's in a special area of the cell called the nucleoid region. So in this prokaryote, the DNA, the chromosome is shown as this dark squiggle here. And it's not inside any membrane or inside anything special inside the cell. It's just sort of in this general region. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, that doesn't look like a circle. And it's true, it doesn't here, but it's actually a really big circle. So if you think of a big circle of string that you have to cram into a tiny little box, it would kind of get tangled up like this. So if you could pull this out, you would see that it is one long loop. In the eukaryote, it's a little bit different. Rather than circular, the chromosomes are organized in a linear fashion, so they're individual strands, and rather than one, there's many. So we'll have multiple linear chromosomes, and they're inside a membrane, they're inside that nucleus. You, for example, have 46 individual linear chromosomes inside the nucleus of all of your cells. So it's arranged differently in the two types of cells. So those are the four major features found in all cells. Over the next couple of weeks, you'll learn more about other parts of specific types of cells. But for now, what you need to know is cell theory, the relative sizes of prokaryotic versus eukaryotic cells, why cells are small, and those four features that we saw that all cells have. So make sure you have all of that information in your notes. And until next time, take care of yourself, take care of each other.